All right. So what I'm going to do is share my screen. And you should be able to see this. And um, I'm really glad that all of you were able to join us today. My name is Ilana Sherman. I'm the Director of Education with Erica's Lighthouse. And um, I have been with Erica's Lighthouse for about three years. I have a nonprofit background um, in working with health education for, for many, many years. Um, in Erica's Lighthouse, I help with our programming team. So I help connect schools and districts to our resources. All of our resources are free of charge and they all um, are geared towards making sure adolescents and teens don't feel alone in what they're going through um, with adolescent depression and mental health challenges. Uh, so I'll give you a little background on Erica's Lighthouse and then we will talk about our teen empowerment pillar and what we have to offer you and how I can help you get a uh, teen club started. So I'm really excited that you're all here. Erica's Lighthouse, uh, the organization was founded back in 2004 after the death of Erica, who was a 14 year old, an eighth grader who died from her depression. It was the second suicide in the small community that school year. So Erica's parents um, and her family and friends sat around a kitchen table and came up with Erica's Lighthouse as a way to make sure this didn't happen anymore. Back then, um, mental health wasn't really talked about. There was a much bigger stigma against it. There still is a stigma, um, but it is talked about more and it's on top of mind more with everything that's happened in the past few years. But um, back then it wasn't. So Erica's Lighthouse started and it started in one school, the middle school where Erica went, and then it grew to the schools that um, fed into the, high, the local high school here. And now we are a national program and growing um, like wildfire. So thank you for being here. We're very mission driven. We're all about educating and spreading education, spreading awareness, breaking down stigma and um, making sure teens feel like they know how to spot, talk to someone if they feel like they need help or a friend needs help. Everything we do is free of charge and we are about over 90% donor funded. Um, so that's how we are able to give you all these amazing resources through um, amazing donors that we have. And our programs are evidence informed um, through the Loyola University, through an evaluation done by Loyola University School of Social Work. So we have four pillars at Erica's Lighthouse that help us to build um, sort of inclusive school cultures around mental health. We have our classroom education programs that some of you might be aware of. We have our uh, school policy and staff development and staff training resources as well. We have family engagement resources and all of this is available to you. I'm not gonna chat about them today, but these are all available to you anytime you'd like. We're gonna focus on in yellow there, that teen empowerment uh, pillar today. The core messages that run through every one of our resources and every one of our programs is um, talking about depression as very factual, that it is a mood disorder. It is common, it's serious, but it's treatable. We focus on that everyone deserves good mental health and that we want teens to know that they're not alone, that there's always hope. So we take a very, very hopeful and positive um, lean or we, we give a hopeful message to our teens as we're teaching them. Since 2004, we've reached 1.5 million teens um, with our programming. And just last year in the 21-22 school year, we impacted 402,000 teenagers or teens with our programming in almost 1,500 schools across the country, even some countries um, or some uh, international countries in, in 40 states. So um, just about a year ago, we were half, you know, less, half that number. So we are really growing um, and we're excited that you're on, our, on the journey with us. In terms of the teen empowerment, last year we had 41 clubs across the country. You can see in the states that our clubs were in. These, when I say clubs, I mean our official Erica's Lighthouse clubs. 
and our affiliate clubs. So we have both types of clubs. I'll explain both. Um, but we had 41 clubs last year, and we are hoping to increase that number um, by a lot. I'm looking at the chat here. Carrie asked, yes, the slides will be available after. Um, and well, the recording will as well. So I will uh, make sure those are available. So why do we do this? Well, we know mental health is a problem. There's an adolescent mental health crisis going on. Up to 20% of young people, one in five, will experience a major depressive disorder episode, I'm sorry, before the age of 20. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for um, young people ages 12, uh, 10 to 24. And when surveyed, we have found that 96% of teens listed depression and anxiety as problems among their peers, and 70% listed them as serious problems among their peers. So it's really up to us to help make sure that our youth know that everyone deserves good mental health. So that's why we encourage schools um, and, and, and counselors and educators like you and social workers to um, really push this teen empowerment because we know that teens can really make a difference. So today we wanna to give you the tools to really shine your light and lead your school and your community to good mental health and your leadership is vital. It's vital to Erica's Lighthouse mission and it's probably vital to um, your school's community as well. So teen empowerment, we believe of course that teens when given the right tools and the right opportunity and access can really change the world. And we can do that with our clubs plus giving them the activities, the resources that they can use, and that can all lead to change. So some of the benefits we know of teen empowerment is that teen empowerment leads, or the, the benefit is student-powered awareness and action. When students talk, their peers listen. Um, you probably notice that if you're an educator and sometimes lecturing in front of the class, it can be helpful at times, but we know peer-to-peer -peer education is really important and really impactful. Uh, that creating cultural change within your school um, is really important as well. And of course, you get a lot of support from us at Erica's Lighthouse. So at Erica's Lighthouse, we have two club options. And I want to explain both. Most of the focus today is going to be on the top one, the official Erica's Lighthouse Teen Empowerment Clubs. But we do have affiliate clubs, and those are important to talk about as well. Our official clubs are is a, our official teen empowerment club is a school club like an after school extracurricular club that empowers and educates to eliminate stigma. We also have affiliate clubs, and affiliate clubs are already existing school clubs within a school that might have a similar mission to ours, um, but they want to almost like partner with us and leverage and use our resources. And some of the examples of those might be um, key clubs or builders clubs. Uh, we are the mental health partner for Kiwanis Key Clubs. We are also partnering with SAD, Students Against Destructive Decisions. So we're going to get lots of SAD chapters becoming um, affiliate clubs and more. There might be a, already a mental health awareness club, a kindness club in your school. If so, and you'd like to utilize and partner with us, utilize our resources, we'd love to have you as an affiliate club. Official uh, clubs are given the opportunity to make a difference in their school and normalize mental illness, promote good mental health, and build a culture of inclusiveness throughout the year. So as an official club, this is what you will get and this is what you will have access to. Over 50 awareness into action activities. I will explain those in a little bit. We have teen empowerment e-newsletters that I send out. Uh, first one will be in October. We have new teen-focused pre-recorded mental health trainings along with discussion questions. They are, uh, we have a teen training series made up of three videos, um, 10 to 15 minutes each, and with follow-up questions that you can use within your club. We, official clubs, we give you up to $250 uh, in funding for uh, materials and um, other things you might need to lead awareness into action activities. And we also give you t-shirt designs so that you can do it yourself, kind of ordering of your t-shirts and we reimburse you per t-shirt. So those are for our official clubs. You'll notice a difference between our affiliate clubs though. 
affiliate clubs, your club has access to all of those awareness into action activities. You have access to the e-newsletters and you have access to those teen training videos. The difference between affiliate clubs and um, official clubs is affiliate clubs do not get the funding. Um, you do not get reimbursed for t-shirts and, um, but there also are less requirements as well. So speaking of the requirements, this is a quick list and I'll go through them in a little more detail. And this is all on our uh, resource portal as well. Um, we expect our clubs to register with us. We have a Google form, um, so it's a pretty simple registration, but it's really important for us to have your club registered. And we ask even the existing clubs each year to register. Um, we need the club to be registered. We need the club sponsor or advisor, so the adult advisor, um, as well as the students to be um, registered as well. If you are an affiliate club, you don't need to register your students. They're probably already in registered possibly with a different club. But with our official clubs, if we can get students registered, that'd be great because they can be part of our e-newsletters and get our information as well. The adult sponsor must create a resource portal account on the Erica's Lighthouse website as that is where all of our resources live. That is where um, this form of requirements is, that's where our Google forms are, that's where the awareness into action activities are, that is where everything lives. Um, third, all student club members must watch the three-part teen training series by December of 22, if possible. We know you might get new members um, as the school year goes on, and as you do, they can watch the videos, but we want to make sure all the teen clubs are educated on, um, with our teen training series. We ask our official clubs to lead at least one activity per school quarter, school-wide um, preferably. And then we also ask you to fill out an activity report after you lead those activities, and that will help you get reimbursed as well. So our registration, um, all of this again is on the resource portal, but it's a simple Google form and you'll need to register your club um, yourself as the advisor, if I'm talking to the advisor right now, as well as then having your students um, register themselves. You can just send them that link. We need uh, the club advisor uh, to create a resource portal account on the Erica's Lighthouse website. Student leaders can make an account as well, or you can share accounts. Um, we have a lot of clubs that have really active student leaders or student club presidents, so they may um, want to be the ones creating the resource portal as well, or all of you can. Our resource portal here is ericaslighthouse.org. It's our website. And then on the upper right corner is the resource portal. We will want your club to watch our teen training series. You can see on the document on the left here, we have three different modules. The first one is uh, just a general on mental health and feelings or emotions. We talk about what is mental health, what are everyday feelings? What are overwhelming feelings? Um, what is stigma as it relates to mental health? And um, our second module, and then we do have discussion questions uh, available for you to lead a discussion afterwards. Our second module is how to be a trusted peer. So we know that probably some of the students in your club might be looked upon um, by their peers or other students in the school that they might, they are, tr you know, trusted leaders or trusted peers. So we want your club members to feel confident in being able to help someone if someone reached out to them. We don't need them to be a therapist. We don't need them to um, overstep the bounds. We want them to be able to um, talk to someone if they're worried about them to get a friend or another peer to help. Um, so we talk about how to be a trusted peer, how to listen non-judgmentally, how to reach out to the appropriate help, et cetera, and how also never to keep secrets or anything like that when it comes to suicidal behaviors or self-harm. We want you to lead at least one activity. We'll talk about those activities. I know there's a question in the chat here. Yep, I'm going to show you some of the examples of activities that we have. Um, we ask you to lead one per quarter. We'd like them to be school-wide. You can always do club activities as well within your club, um, but we really, the, the goal of Erica's Lighthouse is to, of course, make school-wide, you know, impact as many students as you can um, in a creative, high-quality way. So when you can do a school-wide event, even a community-wide event, that would be great. Um, you can choose from our activities that we have here. 
or you can make up your own. Many of our activities that we share with you were made up from other clubs and then shared with us. We also ask that you fill out an activity report. That form, a Google form, is simple to use, and um, that's the form that's used for reimbursement also. So when you get reimbursed for an activity, we will reimburse you up to $50 per activity. And um, if you need to get reimbursed for more, you can reach out to me ahead of time and ask. Sometimes I have the flexibility to allow that. Um, but we reimburse you for things like materials if you're doing some sort of arts and crafts project or making posters in your school or um, making compliment boards and you need to buy post-it notes and markers and um, then we can reimburse you for that we need you to keep your receipt and um, you'll upload that we also really love photos so please take lots of photos of uh, your clubs and of um, the activities and and we are happy to share those so again, we have all these, um, all the requirements on our resource portal. It's in a document that looks like this on the right side and um, it's a live document. So it has links, et cetera, and that's on our resource portal, okay? We also um, have t-shirts that are t-shirt designs, I should say, for our official clubs only, not our affiliate clubs. Official, affiliate clubs, actually anyone is more than welcome to use the designs. We reimburse our official club, $6 per t-shirt. We have different designs. You can see some of here, some of them here. That's our staff from about a month ago. Um, and uh, we, they have different sayings like teens can change the world. We all have mental health. Everyone deserves good mental health. Um, you are not alone. There is hope. So we have these t-shirts and um, you can then take them to a local printer or go online and you could even put your school logo on the back if you wanted or however you want to design them. But that is um, available for our official clubs as well. We just want to make sure that the club is registered already, your students are registered, um, and most likely that they've done their teen training so that we're able to get you these t-shirts or uh, the reimbursed for them. So as I've mentioned, everything is um, organized for you, hopefully in a a very easy to read and understand way on our resource portal. Um, so again, that's the Erica's Lighthouse website, ericaslighthouse.org. In the upper right corner is the resource portal. Many of you probably already have a resource portal because we got your emails from um, you signing up and saying you were interested in teen empowerment. So you can see here, there's different categories, how to get started, the forms, right? That registration form and that activity form. Um, the t-shirt designs and ordering information, resources, the teen trainings on the right. Um, under the teen trainings, we just added the discussion questions as well. The, uh, there's recruitment activities. So everything is there for you, usually in PDF format. Um, so it really should be easy for you to take a look around when you have a few moments. And um, sort of the, the, the engines for our clubs are what we call those awareness into action activities. So I want to share with you some of those activities so that you can get a get used to what we offer and see if this is something that might be of interest to you and see what other clubs have done also. So I have some pictures that I'm going to share with you from other clubs in the past years of activities that they've led around their school, um, some really exciting things. So these are the engines for change. Um, engines of change for schools around the world. These easy to implement campaigns help teens find their voice to raise awareness, reduce stigma and promote help seeking. So we have a lot of awareness into action activities and it's not meant to overwhelm you. It's really meant for you to be able to pick and choose what sounds good. And that's why sometimes it's nice to be able to share your login um, or have a student leader be able to log in as well so that the club can take a look at these. We've got different categories. We have advocacy effort activities. We have mindful moments. Um, we have some virtual things. Those were more popular probably in the past couple of years when we had more remote school. We have positivity promoters, education efforts. You are not alone reminders. And then we've got some inclusive school uh, culture posters that you can hang up. As you can see, things are easy to download. They're available um, as PDFs most of the time, sometimes as Canva um, templates as well. So those of you who use Canva, um, we've given you access to templates so that much of the information is locked on the template, but there might be an open area on there for you to put down your information or our club meets at this time or 
um, a local crisis text line or um, where they can find help in the school, like the counselor's office or the school social worker's office. So you can personalize it as well. We also have some items available in Spanish and we're trying to get more and more of those as we go on. You can see we have new items too. So we're always trying to come up with new items, actually not come up with them, but share new items. Uh, many of these new items, I think we have about 10 here. Most of them were from um, teens themselves. I was able to attend the Kiwanis Key Club International Convention this, um, this summer in Washington, DC and sat with key club members, the teens, and um, we did breakout sessions where they came up with ideas and we took some of their ideas and built upon them and came up with these awareness into action activities. So these are not just from us, these are shared from other groups as well. So I'm gonna share some of them with you and share some photos. You can see here, one of our positivity promoters, this is called uh, Take a Compliment. And this is a piece of paper that you can print out in um, color or black and white if you choose. And it's a tear off um, like you might see in a cafe, you know, in a coffee shop or something. And we have one filled out. And then we also have a blank one that you could create on your own. You could put these on up in, um, I always think it's like, it'd be fun to put these up in the bathrooms if you're allowed in the bathroom stalls, even the lunchroom, the library, anywhere where um, students are walking by. We have mental health bingo. So maybe you want to set up some sort of competition in your school among classes. Um, maybe it's something school-wide you could do over the loudspeaker. However it is, we have one that's filled out. We also have a blank board as well. We have something you could do for Halloween coming up, um, pumpkin patch. It says October isn't only for pumpkin carving. It's also a great month to carve out some time to de-stress. Decorate a pumpkin for the Erica's Lighthouse pumpkin patch and share a way you like to de-stress. You could set something up in the morning as students are walking in. You could set something up in the afternoon as students are walking out or at lunch, um, or if you have an activity fair coming up, this might be something to get involved. And then you can put them up on a bulletin board or decorate a, a door in one of the rooms, however you'd like to do it. We have this new activity called a seat saved for you. Create a table at your school open to any student who needs a place to sit at lunch. The hope is to establish a safe inviting location for those who might feel alone. So um, again, this was made by one of our key club members um, or a few of our key club members for, um, who came up with this idea. So I'm gonna show you some photos and um, I just always think these are really nice because you get an idea of some of our clubs and what they're doing. These are welcome back bags or care packages. These are often um, used after a long break, maybe um, after winter break you know, it could be expensive to make, to hand everyone a bag. Um, it could be after, um, or, you know, after someone's been out of the, you know, doing ho some homeschooling or home bound tutoring or in the hospital or something like that, you could have welcome back bags. You could do de-stressing bags for finals or for testing periods. Um, and you could do a, you know, make, decorate them and um, add little things in there that um, promote positivity, et cetera. We have our Beacon of Hope um, mural. Uh, there's our lighthouse, of course, um, from Erica's Lighthouse. We are a beacon of hope for adolescent depression. One of our clubs last year, actually an affiliate club, they're a key club in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, they came up with this idea to make a mural out of like little pieces of paper, almost like post-it notes. And they had different classrooms get different colored paper and they each wrote different facts on there or different um, quotations or um, positive affirmations, and then they made this mural. So we have this up on the uh, Awareness into Action page for you on our resource portal, if that might be of interest. We also have our Beacon of Hope signs, and this is a great way for your club to work with the staff and, and, and teachers uh, in your school, the administration, because we want to make sure that all of the students in your school know where to reach out for help. We want everyone in your school, of course, to have a trusted adult. And that could be someone in the front office. It could be a coach. It could be their math teacher. It could be the bus driver. It could be you. So we um, use these Beacon of Hope signs to show everyone at the school that you are a trusted adult. So if you have one of these on your door or on the window to your classroom, that sort of means like I'm a beacon of hope. I'm a trusted adult. I'm a safe person to come to. So this is something that your club could use 
to make sure they're spreading information about, you know, to make sure that students don't feel alone. In the bottom right corner, one of our clubs last year in New Jersey um, took it another step and made these like amazing, beautiful wood signs with um, different stickers and quotes. And um, this is what they hung up in their classrooms for teachers who were willing to be a part of this. Here's our, uh, one of our schools did a kindness web. Students walk by and add a note of positivity or encouragement, or you could just, or they could tear one off if you already have them filled out. Um, so I'm trying to go in order of like holidays too, because I know it's sometimes fun to do things toward the holidays or seasons. Spooky scrounge. Um, and some of these items you might have at home or at your school already. They must, they had one of those spin to win wheels. You could do that pumpkin activity. Here's that pumpkin patch activity as well. Uh, what are you thankful for? This was a bulletin board done by um, one of the clubs. And again, you could have um, all the classrooms be involved. It could be one of the grades. Um, it could be they were blank and students can walk by and fill it out. Locker notes. This is something simple that maybe many of you have done before, but it could be something that your club leads on an early Monday morning before students come back to school or before finals, um, before testing, um, or just on a random day to promote positivity. One of our schools was really creative and bought um, pumpkin pies around Thanksgiving and these blank puzzle pieces. And they had students write down what like they're thankful for. And then, then the, and anyone in the school could come by for a slice of pumpkin pie, but also take part in this activity. Another one of our schools um, came up with this activity called How Full Is Your Cup? And they were um, almost like making a connection between stress and a full cup, like of coffee or hot chocolate, and that when you have too much of it, it overflows. So they've made these stickers and um, talked about, you know, are you overwhelmed, overloaded, stressed, busy, occupied, relaxed? And then um, you could actually fill out how full is your cup. And then they were giving out coffee or hot chocolate um, on a, you know, colder day. Here's another um, one of our clubs from years ago, handing out um, coffee before testing. We've got a lot of clubs, you know, something easy, like even making posters or signs to hang up around the school, spreading kindness and ways to de-stress, et cetera. Follow the Footprints is an activity that was developed by the club on the left there. And we have footprints that have um, mental health facts on them that you can print out. You can see them actually up on the pictures on the right. Um, and you can then put those in your school along uh, the floor, though they might get ruined, but along a wall. And they lead to um, the mental health professionals offices in your school. Maybe it's the school counselor, the school social worker, school psychologist. So they're sort of, again, pushing that, hey, there are people you can talk to because we know that not every student knows where the mental health professionals are in the school, but it's um, that it leads there. And then maybe in the office, there's, you know, a bowl of candy there that you found it or you do it around St. Patrick's Day and there's, you know, a pot of gold or something. So there's a way um, it's sort of following the footprints to the counselor's office. Again, take a compliment board. These, the students made their own. And so that was a really fun way. They didn't even use ours. Another school brings in comfort dogs. Um, they partner with another nonprofit in their area and they bring in comfort dogs once or twice a year. And it's such a hit. They have they invite the, anyone in the school to come by and it's just sponsored by their Erica's Lighthouse Teen Club. We also have um, an activity called Make a Wall of Inspiration. It could be with quotes. It could be with notes of positivity. And um, then we also you can make these little like uh, notes for encouragement. So you could buy mints. Um, you know, any type of peppermint or lifesavers. Um, and you could put a note on there, here's a little encouragement to freshen up your day and maybe hand them out um, on, a, on a specific day. So it's a really nice way for your club to, um, you know, show their support for all their students. So on the resource portal, so that's just um, a few of these. On the resource portal, we also have like an example of what you could do for the entire year. 
Um, so I've tried to divide them up a little bit. Um, you know, for fall, there might be some pump, that pumpkin patch, Thanksgiving gratitude postcards. And then we go into winter and spring. Um, so there is like spring, you can see the positivity pledge for mental health awareness month. That's, it'll be our, I think third or fourth year doing that. So that'll be coming up, but there's some ideas of, um, activities you could do year round as well. You also, we do host, um, help you host a, um, school or community fun run or walk or fun run. If you're ever interested, we have this on our website as well. Um, we have, uh, you know, all the information you need and you could do a, a walk or a fun run in the fall before the bad weather comes. Or if you're in like Southern California, then you could probably do it anytime. I'm in Chicago and so I cannot do it anytime. So before we finish up um, again, I just wanna share with you how to access the resources and sort of what to do next. Um, ericaslighthouse.org resource portal in the right corner, but also on the Erica's Lighthouse page, everything we have, classroom programs, family engagement resources, staff training resources, it, all, it is all there for you to take a look at just because we're talking about teen clubs here. Um, you know, I'm always available also to answer any other questions. This is what the resource portal looks like. These are the titles that come down in our, what we call accordion titles here. In the yellow are probably the two um, areas that you're going to want to look at for teen empowerment. Teen clubs, that's where um, you're going to get the resources, the forms, the um, t-shirt designs, the recruitment information, and then all those awareness into action activities right here. So that's all here. But feel free to play around and take a look. We would also love if you decide that this is what you want to do and you want to join and create a club, we would love for you to um, have that club on Instagram. A lot of our clubs are now joining Instagram and I don't quite understand it completely, um, but I try to follow everybody. Um, but we love to share. We have, we just hired a social media coordinator. So we do a lot of sharing between our clubs and our key club, all the, all the teams that promote us. Um, we try to promote you as well. So it's a really fun way to show what you're doing in your community. So um, here is my email, which all of you should have, Ilana at ericaslighthouse.org. And um, feel free to email me with questions if you have them. Um, and, you know, if you want to get started, if you feel like this is a something that sounds good, then I would love to answer any questions you have. If you don't have questions, though, you can go ahead and um, register on our resource portal under teen clubs, register your club. And I'll probably be reaching out once I see it's a new club, um, reaching out and seeing if I can answer any questions. Sometimes I even like to um, jump on a Zoom with your club if, if possible um, and meet them and say hello from Erica's Lighthouse and thanks for volunteering their time, et cetera. So sometimes we can set things up like that. I'm going to stop sharing here and um, look at the chat here, see if anyone has any questions. I'm looking at we had Diana from California Hill, Alicia from Little Rock. Hi, Alicia. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, Tyra. Anyone, do you have criteria for selecting club members? Um, we don't select the club members. Um, it's really up to you. You know, um, I've, I don't know. I've never been asked that. The, I would just make sure, you're, you know, just someone who's interested and someone who you think has, you know, the passion and the creativity who wants to make a difference, which is probably most students, I would think. And we know that also some clubs, you know, you're up against a lot of other activities in clubs. So sometimes clubs might meet every week. Um, but they may get five students one week and 15 the next week because there's just other activities that the students are involved in. And sometimes, you know, you have to decide if that's, if you're willing to it be like a flow, um, when, come when you can, et cetera. Um, but, you know, we try to make it a little consistent. And if you can have some club leadership, that would be helpful too, because you can have committees like, okay, this committee thinks of the activities, this committee is for social media, this committee talks to the administrators, however you want to organize it. Our Instagram is, um, 
look at me looking. Um, I think it's Erica's dot lighthouse. E R I K A S. I will type that in. Uh, let's see. Are there, is there anything you recommend for fourth and fifth graders? Um, you know, we do have middle schools that are doing clubs. We have a lot more middle schools this year doing clubs. Um, but for fourth and fifth grade, I mean, there may be some activities that would work really well um, for the upper elementary. We have um, we have classroom education programs for upper elementary. Um, so there's probably some good activities that you could lead with upper elementary students, um, especially some of the like positivity promoters and mindful moments, et cetera. Um, for fourth and fifth to stay away from, I mean, typically in our fourth and fifth upper elementary programming, we stay away from, we're not talking about obviously like so much as suicide or self-harm. We're not even in a, that program talking about depression so much if you're educating, but um, we are talking about like everyday feelings, overwhelming feelings, how to, um, you know, what are good mental, you know, positive mental health behaviors, taking care of yourself, what you should do if you're worried about a friend, how you could reach out, who's a trusted adult, how you could reach out for help. Okay, thank you. Heidi is one of our um, affiliate clubs. She said she has a fifth through eighth grade club and we use the mental health fourth through sixth grade program. That's our level one classroom program and adapt it to the students. She said she also looks through the projects and keeps it at their level. Thank you. Um, do we have good resources to share with administration to advocate, to advocate for starting a club? Um, we have, I'm trying to think, we don't have like a one page. Well, we do have like a marketing on our website, probably under staff resources. We might have like a teen empowerment um, page. We also have some blog posts. You, if you want to email me, Carrie, um, you can reach out and I'll see if I can find stuff for you to, to be able to push that, help you push that. Anyone else, any questions? There's not a fundraising goal. You don't have to fundraise at all. Um, really, again, everything we offer is free of charge. If you wanna become an official club of ours, we give you funding up to $250 um, a year. So we will refund you or reimburse you $50 per activity um, for materials. We do ask that you use Erica's Lighthouse in your club name. So if you are at um, Barrington High School, you know, our club, that's a club we have in Barrington, Illinois, near here. And it's, you know, the Barrington High School Erica's Lighthouse Club. So we do ask you use Erica's Lighthouse in your club name. Um, and of course, that you have to do your registration and your teen trainings and lead your one activity per quarter. But there's no fundraising goal. Anyone else? Well, thank you so much. I hope you have a good night. I'll stay on just in case. Um, you may be able to unmute yourself, I'm not sure, but I'll stay on just in case. Um, but thank you all for being here. I hope you have a really nice night and thanks for taking the time today.